fling singer Drake's awkward dance moves to 11-time platinum artist Adele's new album. Everyone's a buzz about the new music scene. The blurb has all the details on what's going on with the hitmakers of Hollywood. Plus, breaking news about Lamar Odom. He's conscious and out of the hospital. We have the latest coming up. Where we make Kent feel like Hollywood. This is the blurb. makes a recovery with family by his side. I'm Andrea Siebert. And I'm Zach Jones. After being in a coma for almost three days, Lamar Odom has been released from the hospital. Tuesday, Odom was hospitalized because of an overdose. He was found unconscious in a Nevada brothel. The former NBA star has been showing slow signs of improvement since waking up Friday. Family, friends, and former teammates have surrounded Lamar during his hospital stay. And by his side since the beginning, Khloe Kardashian. His former lover was spotted leaving Las Vegas, accompanying Lamar's transport to Los Angeles Hospital. Chloe wrote a statement on her website about the difficult week and how thankful she's been for the support from family, friends, and hospital staff. We wish them the best. And now some music news. Adele, the soulful singer, previewed what's thought to be a song from her new album. During an ad, during an ad on a break on a British X Factor, on British X Factor, a mysterious 30-second lyric video played with no images of the singer. Rumor has it Adele will drop 25. Yes, she's apparently using a number again on November 20th. Are you excited, Andrea? Of course. It's been so long since Adele's been around because she had her baby and everything. Let's bring her back a little bit. Her and Sam Smith should do a collab. Saying it now. But JT is bringing Sexy back to his hometown, Memphis, Tennessee. Saturday night, Justin Timberlake was inducted into the city's Music Hall of Fame. Timberlake was introduced by none other than his BFF, Jimmy Fallon. And during JT's 20-minute speech, he spent most of it gushing about his, quote, beautiful, loving, and incredibly understanding wife, Jessica Biel. He was even holding back tears while praising his wife. Can we say hashtag husband goals? Now let's throw it over to Cassie. Justin Bieber, Star Wars, and more. She has all the trending stories. What's up, Cassie? Well, Andrea, Drake finally released the music video for his song, Hotline Bling. Many have taken to Twitter, making very funny videos regarding Drake's very different dance moves. The video opens up with an office of phone sex operators to keep with the theme of the song. Then Drake sh shifts to Drake in a futuristic looking room that changes different colors. People describe Drake's dancing as dad dancing. Whether you like it, the video or not, it has definitely been a talked about one. I know I sure enjoyed it. Next up, Justin Bieber sure has been in the news a lot recently. The number one trending topic this weekend dealt with the unofficial release of a song with ex Selena Gomez. He premiered the track on OVO Sound Radio on Saturday. There is not a title yet to it, but in the chorus, Bieber sings, Gotta be strong, strong, strong. This is very controversial because on Twitter, the ex couple supposedly called it quits for a long time ago. Some report the song is three years old, and good luck finding it online now. Many of the recordings have been taken down. And finally, the Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, set off a firestorm on social media. Not only with the ticket release Monday night, but the hashtag boycott Star Wars 7 trending quickly. People think that the episode is, quote, anti-white. Due to these comments, other people have slammed the boycotters for their opposing opinions. People in support of the boycott think that the episode promotes, quote, white genocide. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time that Star Wars has stirred racial controversy. What do you guys think on Twitter? Let us know at TV2 The Blurb. Back to you, Zach. Thank you, Cassie. The gym tan and laundry days are officially over for the cast of the MTV show Jersey Shore, especially for JWoww. Sunday, Jenny JWoww Farley officially tied the knot with longtime boyfriend Roger Matthews. But their vows weren't the only thing they shared that day. The couple also announced that they are expecting their second baby. JWoww says she is very excited to begin her pregnancy journey and knows that she has an amazing support system. Congratulations to the couple on their marriage and big news. Great Scott, get out your puppy vests and hoverboards because tomorrow is the day everyone has been waiting for for 25 years, Back to the Future Day. Tomorrow marks the day Marty McFly came to the year 2015. Although we still don't have the exact hoverboards as predicted by the movie, the Chicago Cubs winning the 2015 World Series is still a possibility. But after tomorrow, the future will be in the past. But in the near future, Ariana will drop her new single October 30th. The sassy pop star revealed the album artwork for her single, Focus. 
but it seems the singer might have made a few changes to herself for the cover. The album shows Grande as a platinum blonde. People freaked out. One, because it was such a change, and two, after all of the hair problems she's had before. It seemed unhealthy to go to such an extreme color. But no worries, the pop singer was just wearing a wig. Guess she just wants the single to go platinum. Eh? Eh? Get it? When we come back, a Parma, Ohio family gets some national attention. We'll tell you why and what were they thinking. Plus, Gaby lands an interview with the Kent student who was also a model. But Blurb returns just after these special messages. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Donate stuff, create jobs. Donald Trump is stirring up the controversy yet again. Allie has all the details. It's time for What Were They Thinking? With presidential candidate Donald Trump to soon host Saturday Night Live, it's got a lot of people asking, what were they thinking? The National Hispanic Leadership Agenda sent an open letter to NBC and SNL to get the GOP candidate's appearance canceled. Earlier in the year, the candidate made racist remarks on, the, on immigration that got him fired from NBC's The Apprentice. Comedian Margaret Cho was also slamming the SNL producers for the host choice calling Trump a known racist and sexist, as well as for what she says is a lack of Asian American representation on the show for the last 41 years. All I've got to say about this is if it makes racist remarks like a duck, walks like a duck, and has a comb over like a duck, well, then you know the rest. And get this, a man accidentally shoots himself in the leg in a Kansas movie theater. While watching Maze Runner, the Scorch Trials on Friday, moviegoers got an unexpected surprise when the man's gun went off. Just receiving his concealed and carry permit, the man brought the gun with him to the theater. Only military veteran Tim Coleman, however, helped the man to stop the bleeding while waiting for first responders, with the rest of the crowd fleeing the theater. The man was treated for a for, at a local hospital for his non-life-threatening gun wound to the upper thigh. Some are blaming the incident on a state law that just went into effect, allowing gun owners to conceal and carry without training or a permit. I bet Democrats are thinking, told you so. And ke apparently Kevin Hart has a love for the strippers, but not a, love, a lot of love for waiting in line. While in Canada, actor Kevin Hart found himself in the middle of chaos over the weekend at a strip club. As Hart and his team of bodyguards were leaving the club, his posse started pushing their way through the crowd, causing the club's bodyguards to push back. During the scuffle, Hart throws and breaks a woman's phone for recording the incident. And just as Hart is leaving, a waitress approaches his SUV to close out her tab. But the SUV leaves anyway. The club owner later states the altercation was a misunderstanding, and being a good guy, Hart will definitely pay his tab.
It looks like one company is getting backlash for their derogatory jokes on Twitter recently. The official Twitter account for IHOP is sounding more hip and modern lately with tweets like pancakes on fleek, but fans thought the account took it too far with one tweet reading, flat but has a great personality, describe their pancakes. Customers took the, to Twitter to express their disapproval with the company, removing the tweet and later apologizing. Some advice for IHOP, stick with what you're good at. Keep serving those pancakes, okay? And that's everything for What Were They Thinking This Week. What do you think about IHOP's racy tweets to relate to a younger crowd? Tweet us at TV2 The Blurb with your responses. Back to you, Andrea. Thank you, Allie. Well, Parma, Ohio's been put on the map. Can you guess why? For some Halloween fun. Local Halloween enthusiasts put up a realistic display, but not everyone was down for it. People complained because of the children. They just thought it's too darn scary. Then the story got picked up nationally, and even internationally with UK's Daily Mail. The family took down the, the display because one night they woke up to a bunch of random people in their yard. Now the display is up again. Monday they told Fox 8 that it's back because of the support from the community. Police officers even offered protection if they reinstalled the setup. Quote, it's Halloween and we don't like plastic pumpkins or skulls. What do you think, Andrea? I don't know, I'm not a fan of like scary things, so I think there's a line that they kind of cross, but then again, happy Halloween. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. A Backstreet Boys and Spice Girls tour. And Ellen does too. Rumors have been all over social media about this potential tour, but nothing's been set in stone. Backstreet Boy Nick Carter has been very vocal on Twitter about wanting to make this tour a reality. Carter not only has the support of every 90s kid ever, but also has Ellen DeGeneres on board. Carter told Ellen that all of the boys are down and it's now up to the girls to give it the okay. Ellen told her viewers that she will now work on convincing the girls to approve the tour. If there's one thing I've learned, Ellen can do anything. Hopefully she can bring the Spice Girls and Backstreet back, all right? Now, Kent State is known for having one of the top fashion programs in the country. Making many students are taking to social media to create their brand and blog about their own personal style. Fashion student Gina Kanjemi got her start by posting photos of her style on Instagram. She now models for the clothing company Air Postal. Reporter Gabrielle Payne joins us now with special guest Gina to find out exactly how she became the Insta famous and launched her modeling career. Gabrielle? Thank you so much, Andrea. Well, I am so excited to be standing in the presence Hi. of our very special guest, Gina Kanjemi. Gina is a fashion student here at Kent, but not only that, she is an up and coming social media starlet it. and Aeropostale model. This girl All is right. modeling for Aeropostale. She's <laughs> in my presence right now. So excited. She described this look as what did you say? Midterm this, exam. This is my midterm exam week. Yeah. Midterm exam week. She's sporting this. I told her I was lucky Outfit. enough to wear matching socks. So, <laughs> so excited. Gina, how did you get started then with Aeropostale? Okay, well, it's a crazy story. I just started working as a sales associate in the store, and from there it's kind of history. Wow. But, um, working for the crazy. store. And then they saw yes. you and they were like, okay, she works in the store, but we need her to be the face of Aeropostale. Yeah. <laughs> not the face, but yeah, I, I'm on the their face, Not media. just the face, but also the, the form, you know, the, the style, <laughs> yeah. everything. So they asked you to start working for them mm -hmm. and uploading your photos, mm -hmm. and how long ago was that? Three years ago. Three years yeah. ago, and it's only it's only gone up from there. So, and I work for them in New York over the summer, interning with their social media now. Wow. So wow. Yeah. I am like a content creator for them, so I will still just take you know tons of photos, just lifestyle photos, whatever I want, fashion photos, and send it to them, and they'll use it on all of their social media platforms. And then I just wow. do the same thing while I'm in. Wow. New York too. Yeah. And Eric Hostel has built up a huge following on Instagram. How many followers do they have? They now? have about three million now. Three million yeah. followers are seeing Gina's <laughs> outfits of the day on their Instagram. Yeah. And you're saying you've got followers from across the country. I know you were mm -hmm. telling me about you were in All Florida and what happened when you and were there. I was in the store, and they were like. Excuse me, are you Gina? Do, do you have pictures for Arrow? And I was just like, amazing. I wanted to cry because they were just like, you know, we love you, and it was just, it's, it means a lot. So yeah, to have a I fan from Florida come and recognize yeah. you already at such a young age yeah. and so successful already. So where do you see the future going with you, with Aeropostale, with your major in the fashion industry? Yeah, I definitely want to still be with Arrow because they're such a good company, and I would love to be in New York this time next year just doing the same thing and see where 
Take wow. Some. Well, I have no doubt that you will do thank that, Gina. You. I know thank you're you. going to definitely be a face that we will remember. Thank so you. thank you so much for being thank with you. us today. <laughs> Back to you. Thank you, Gaby. When we return, our Runway Rundown crew will go off the catwalk and go online. It's the fashion bloggers' turn to shine. And Nas is here with fashion trends that will break the internet, but not break the bank. We'll be right back. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Let's get a little bit rowdy. R-O-W-D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more time. today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her, though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome to Runway Rundown. I'm your host, Kim Anderson. And I'm Harold Horsley. And joining us tonight, we have Kyle Dawson and Landon Gerais. Well, style bloggers have taken over on every social media platform from Tumblr to Instagram. And this week, we're talking all about some of the most influential bloggers and their own personal style. Now, this first look comes from us, from Robin Stewart, better known as Robin Stew 8. She's wearing a light wash denim top and pant with a motorcycle suede jacket, and she topped it off with a cream fedora and fringe stilettos. What do you think about this look, Landon? I, I just don't like all the denim, and then with the beige, I feel like it would need more color. And like the double collar is really, I just, I, feel, I would feel too constricted, and I just am not into it. Get me out of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have we ever heard of the phrase denim Dan? That's what yeah. the, that's what this <laughs> reminds me of. And like I am a fan of denim, but I think this is a little like too light, so it's too much. And it kind of looks like a jumpsuit, and there's just like no mm -hmm. other color besides like the light. Like she kind, I love this look, but she looked like she was going in between guys and dolls, and I'm going to be it reminds Pocahontas. Me, yeah, it reminds yeah. me of those like old western movies where there's like someone who's trying to tame the wild west, and she's like <laughs> out there doing it. I, I don't know. But our next look is from model turned blogger Margaret Zhang. Fresh off of Chanel's Paris Fashion Week runway, she was spotted wearing a long gray trench coat over a st simple black dress and lace-up boots that are literally to die for. What do you think, Kyle? I agree with the boots. I love the boots. <laughs> I think it's like added detail. Mm -hmm. um, I love the jacket, too. I like the little detail on the belt as well. Um, so it's kind of simplistic with a little extra like oomph from the details. The one thing I could live without is the scarf. I just think it's like awkwardly tight and a little too thin, so it just looks kind of off. I swear this picture looks like it was taken in the fashion building. Just got off the <laughs> <of> class. <laughs> <laughs> the stairwell. Yeah, I agree. I like it. The shoes, I love. The scarf is just what's killing me. Yeah. The boots are to kill for. Thin. I would literally so, kill for those boots. So that's how you think that you could fix, like, if there's anything that you would change up from this Take outfit. the scarf out. Scarf. Just the boots absolutely. just justify the whole look. But I would she could just that. wear the boots and then a the clean black shirt else. and Harold would be... And she, <laughs> and, no, but really, like, now moving on, <laughs> we have a look from Ame or Songs of Styles on Instagram. She's wearing a white flared out dress, 
pant with a sheer white button down and a knee length suit jacket complimented with nude heels that I personally did not like. But what do you think about this look? I like it. I like the color. Um, I think it kind of flows well together. The only thing I could live without is the flare pants. I think it's too much like flow going on. Too much I really, <laughs> Usually like something like this where it's just so much material, I just am not a fan of, but I really like this and I really like all the nude colors. I think it looks really good. Like she, I, it works really well for her. She looks like one of those, like someone was trying to dress up as an angel and display her <laughs> costume. Like how many white fabrics can I find to put together? I'm not really a fan of this at all. But there isn't much you could put with white. As soon as you, <laughs> as soon as you step out, <laughs> listen, this girl can never eat lunch because as soon as you try to eat some of that mm -hmm. pasta, it's just going to go everywhere. Oh. Every, time, every single time, without fail. I feel like there could be like a little added color in there somewhere because she kind of gets lost within it all. But overall, I like it. Yeah. Well, we focused a lot on well-dressed women, and now it's time to give the men a shout out. David Gandy, also known as at David Gandy underscore official, is rocking a gray suit jacket and pant with a double plaid with a plaid double-breasted vest over top of a classic black tie and button-down. What do you think of this look, Landon? He doesn't look bad. <laughs> Other than doesn't the beautiful man he's wearing. No, he's but beautiful. seriously, I really like it. I really like all the gray and then like the plaid underneath. And then the black tie, I feel like, really pulls the whole thing together because you see the little bit of the black in the vest underneath it. I really like it. I like the vest because it's kind of like that classic, like, old-fashioned-y mm -hmm. look. But, like, there's just something about a guy that's all dressed up that you just... You can't complain about. I just feel like my <laughs> wallet is broken half from looking at this suit. Cause I know, like, I just know it's expensive, and I just admire him for that. Or he gets it free from. So, do you guys think this is a look that someone in regular life could pull off? Because these are bloggers, and they. I get guess paid. the hot math teacher that. <laughs> True. The hot the math teacher that I think someone could really wear this. Well, the next look is from Crystal Bick. She is a style blogger from New York, and she's wearing a hybrid sheer and lace dress with blue and gray, and paired with white heels. What do you think about this look, Kyle? Mm, I don't think I'm a fan of this. I think there's a lot going on. I think there's a lot of detail in the mix of the lace and the different um, extremes of like the sheer area. Um, and then I think the length is just a little off. Like maybe if it was shorter, something, it just, I'm not a fan of this. I, I do like the color though. Yeah, I get, like I said, I get confused because it's like, is she going to a wedding or is she mm -hmm. going to the office to flirt with the boss? I would own this what dress if I could. I love it's, it. Yeah. Like you said, there's a exactly. lot going on. I feel like that's why I love it. Cause there's just so much to look at. Mm -hmm. I like, want it. There's like so many different layers of this dress too. And I think that for sure it's a dress that obviously has to have an occasion. You can't mm. just like wear this when you're right. Would you wear it on absolutely. date night or would, what would you wear? With? I like a wedding. Yes. It's the ultimate. Absolutely. Yeah. Going to a wedding. Well, our last look of the night is from Christina Bazan, who was actually named one of Elle's um, fashion blogger rookies of the year. She's wearing a camel colored sweater over a brown trench dress with thigh high black heels. What do you guys think of this look? You already know how I think about thigh highs, you know. <laughs> yes. Every single time. I'm a, yeah. I'm a fan of the tall, blue, uh, tall boots. I'm not a fan of the different like shades of caramel. Like I think the little peekaboo oh, of the it. skirt. There's just a lot going on, and none of it is necessarily good in like I, the upper half of this. It looks like she just outfit. has a whole bunch of cardboard on. Like I really don't I, like it. I don't understand sweater dresses. I don't like it when Kim Kardashian does it. I don't get it in this look. I'm not. And the fact that she's that's putting it over top of something that's already bulky. And exactly. her hair is also kind of the same color, so that's. I think she's to trying too. to camouflage she's a with a brick wall. Box. Box. Exactly. You know. yeah. So let's just stick with the boots. We've. We've exactly. Just, there you go. Yes. The high boots. Well, that's all the time we have for Runway Rundown this week. Now let's go to our style reporter, Nas Jackson, for the latest. What's new, Nas? Thanks, Kim. I'm all for affordable fashion, and I'm here to share with you guys some bloggers that like to inspire for less. First, Patrice J. from New York City focuses on fashion finds that are really inexpensive, and I mean really. She's worked in the industry for over 10 years and has even been featured on Glamour.com for some of her great styling tips. Don't miss any more. You can check her out on LookingFlyOnADime.com. Vlogger Hannah shows us how to live and look fabulous without breaking your wallet. This California native gives us the run off the runway looks with items from Target, Shoe Dazzle, and Forever 21, just to name a few. Her website, ChampagneLifestyleBlog.com, also includes beauty life, decor tips, and even a link to shop her exact outfits. And our last blogger is Katie Tarwalt. She's more of a casual slash boho type of girl, not too flashy. She pairs items together from Old Navy, PacSun, Charlotte Russe, and various online boutiques. Her looks are really simple with a little pinch of sass. Find more of her posts at travel, mytravelingcloset.com. 
This week's inspiration for our affordable outfit is Ditto. This easy to wear afternoon look is great for a gossip luncheon with some friends. Pair a hooded denim poncho from H&M with some black skinny jeans. Would you be able to guess that those denim pumps were a whopping $25? And the purse is from Aldo's. It doesn't get any better. For now, that's all I have, but tune in next week as I show some fun and festive DIY costume ideas. Back to you guys. Thanks, Nas. Okay, Harold, I have a question. What do a baby and I have in common? Your very adorable cheeks, I can just pinch up. Well, that and we both have an insane <laughs> love for Adam Levine. When we come back, we have the best viral videos of the week and you won't want to miss them, trust me. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18, one in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of finding someone to invest in his vision? One in 4.5 million. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed as our nation is with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be, with the high purpose to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all. We approach this problem of re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Welcome back to The Blurb. Well, the first family runs the U.S., but I think they might be starting a singing career on the side. Last week, Usher celebrated his 37th birthday and got serenaded by the one and only Commander-in-Chief, President Obama, featuring his family. Maybe Barack is about to drop the hottest album of all time. What would you do if this happened to you, Zach? I mean, forget singing happy birthday to me. I'd be wanting to, like, throw a birthday bash with my boy with Obama. With your BFF right? Obama? Seriously. <laughs> Well, this little girl is living the Adam Levine dream. It seems like every girl wants to marry the pop star. Well, Ellen made this one person's dream come true. Check it out. Just like the rest of us, our first guest was heartbroken to hear that Adam Levine got married. Take a look. I don't want you to be too sad, but I was going to tell you, Adam Levine got married. No! He did. No! You still love him a whole lot, right? Yeah. Do you like him or do you love him? I love him. You love him. I had about the same reaction as her, though, when I found out. Well, that's all the time we have for you this week. Don't forget, if you haven't gotten your Hunter Hayes ticket, he'll be coming to the Kiva, or not Kiva, the Student Center this week, this Friday, at October 23rd. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at tv 2 Blurb. Good night, everyone. Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. Cause every kid across the nation deserves a book to read. And we can make it happen right now. No, I don't know what you've been told. But kids with books learn so much more. So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child. <laughs>
read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition.